Uh, g'day, it's Mark here from Tough Touring. Um, behind me, I've got a Conqueror UEV 440, which shares the same axle components as a UEV 490. Um, this trailer belongs to a fairly regular customer. He's set up really well. He's got the wraparound Conqueror awning, which is unreal. Uh, and he's done quite a few of our upgrades and mods. Um, he's had his chassis extended and strengthened, uh, gone to DO35 hitch. Um, he's fixed his uh, fridge, fridge sliding, which was stuck. This is a 2012, by the way, and he bought it in um, rough condition. Uh, we did an airbag conversion for this one for him, uh, as well as a vehicle components, electric brake, 12 inch electric brakes and uh and wider stub axles to match his uh toyota um we replaced his shocks we went picked the original tough dog um and also replaced his retention strap um with a single unit which we get out of superior engineering it's uh it's a nine ply um the reason we changed the extension strap is to allow space between the airbag when it's compressed the suspension strap or the retaining strap sorry and the shock absorber uh, you'll note if you've looked into these uh, these machines before you'll see that there's usually a triangular block there which can rub on the uh, the airbags which results in uh, in holes in the airbags um, now we've also straightened up the suspension quite a lot of the conquerors will come out with with sort of I guess a spring that kind of goes around corners here a little bit in that the base by nature of its enormous travel, you'll see the angle there on the, the A-arm. By the nature of its enormous travel, it has to swing through an arc. So the, the suspension can quite, if it's quite high up, you end up with a, a, a bow in the suspension, um, which doesn't give it the best handling on road. Certainly great for um, for travel. Uh, we sort of tend to fit the airbags with a more, a more of a vertical alignment. Um, now, all good and great, but that's not really what I'm talking about in this video, so sorry if I got off the track, but excellent stuff as well. The major thing here that I wanted to show you was the squeaking in a UEV 440 or 490 uh, issue. Uh, a lot of owners will come to us saying they've got this horrible squeaking sound right from factory. Um, we know what it is. It's actually this bolt here running through the A-arm. Now, inside that A-arm, the, the standard setup is like this. You've got these large plastic bushes on the end that spin. I'll put it on the ground so I can spin it for you. Let's get the camera in a better way. These plastic bushes on the end here spin on a shaft. Now inside the shaft is a secondary shaft, which is the actual axle. Um, now what the squeaking is, is, is basically these two metal components here bonding up and, and not being able to spin like that. Uh, this one's bone dry. Uh, if you were able to apply grease to this setup, it would be quite okay, it's quite a good design. Sadly, it's not serviceable because it doesn't have any access for grease nipples. Um, and being a mild steel, any sort of salt uh, or salt water that would, would cause rust here would cause these to basically seize up solid. And you'll see that started to happen here. See evidence of rust on the, the bushes. Sometimes this will expand into that and they lock, or sometimes this will expand into this and it locks. Either way, once it locks, that A-arm that should pivot here can't pivot anymore. It increases the load on this steel and eventually causes cracking here. The, uh, the squeaking is the beginning of that process um, of the locking up. Now what we've done on this one is, uh, we've done a lot of these now, maybe, maybe more than a dozen. Um, is we've used an improved A-arm axle kit that we've made here. Uh, we do have a commercial interest, obviously we make these for a living. Um, it wasn't easy the first time to get it right, but you'll see there's a grease nipple on the end. The grease nipple runs into little ported holes, which pump um, quite successfully, it means that the grease can, can travel down the, the axle and into the bush and keep the thing spinning. Now it's a one piece design, we haven't gone with a two-piece because we didn't want anything getting in between the shaft and the main axle, so it's just a single, single stronger unit. Not that those ones, the originals, ever break. It's just that they can lock up. Um, this one can't lock up, and yeah, you can certainly keep applying, applying grease every year or so if you wish, 
or if you do some salt water driving, grease is going to prevent rust anyway. Um, so that is our A-arm axle kit. Now the installation of it, uh, it is fairly straightforward if you've done it before. Sadly, the first time it ain't easy. Um, you basically have to take your springs off here, your retention strap, you might as well repair that with a new one and improve the model of it while you're at it. Your shock off, you basically, your axle here, just because it's heavy, we we'll remove that just to get the A-arm light. Uh, and then we cut um, with a reciprocating saw. You'll see that this one's had the ends cut off. We cut them out because once they're seized, you won't get them out uh, with a hammer. You might get them out with a sledgehammer, but there's just not a lot of room in there to go swing on a sledgehammer. So um, typically you can't. There's also very little room under the trailer. On the inside, I'll show you here. You'll note that um, the water tank will just get under there for you. You'll note that the water tank here, uh, I can't see where we're in. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So you'll see that the water tank, it, it butts up pretty hard to the axles. So it's very, very difficult to slide the axles in um, and then get enough room to get grease nipples on there. But you can do it eventually. You just got to sort of work it out. We tend to push the, the A-arm axles in from the outside here. Um, so tools you'll need, typical, typical tools will be a, an excellent drill with a 30 millimeter up to 30 millimeter step drill component. I'll show you some of this on a bench. Um, we use a conical burr, burr grinder as well and one of our kits. I've got most of the tools laying around here on the floor at the moment. So I've um, got a good hammer, a crowbar, or a pinch bar, usual tools, spanners, 13 mil spanners, 30 mil spanners, two of those for the enormous nuts that are on it. Um, the burr grind is really handy, which is this tool here. <coughs> That's for shaving out, <coughs> basically cutting out, uh, cutting out the ends of the arms where they don't fit. That's my drill, and that's my 30 mil step drill. Um, for more on that, we will have an instruction kit that goes out with the axles. Um, if you want to do the job, you can do it yourself. As far as jacking the trailer, that's the first hurdle, I guess. Uh, we tend to just sit, sit it on stands as such, on the rear points and again at the front. Uh, two of us gave that a good go at trying to push it off and we couldn't, so we know it's strong enough. Um, sometimes we'll use a steel beam between these two, but um, in this case we didn't, didn't really have to. Um, anyway, the job's taken us around about the 14 hours, uh, one guy, um, which is fairly good. I think the first couple might have took us 25, so we're getting quicker slowly as we, as we get used to it. Hope you like the video if you're a Conqueror owner. Um, great machine. This one is just even better with really nice soft ride and no more squeaking. Um, anyway, I hope you like the video and feel free to call us anytime at Tough Touring if you need help with your suspension with a, a Conqueror. We, uh, we play with them all. Thanks a lot. Cheers, buddy.